Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make some inexpensive jelly printmaking tools, or also tools that you can use in your acrylic painting, um, or whatever sort of crafting you like to do. These are also really good for pottery, um, just when you want to make some marks and textures. Now these are double-ended silicone spatulas that I picked up at the Dollar Tree, and um, they're great for using on your jelly plates because, uh, or your gelatin printmaking plates, any sort of printmaking plates, because um, they're they're soft, they're easy to wipe up, and they're not going to damage a plate. So rather than using like a metal palette knife or something which might actually damage your plate, you can use this for applying paint to your palette or for scraping paint away. It kind of squeegees it off so it's really, really great. And you get two ends for the price of one, which is really nice. Nice. So after I got one home, I realized, oh, I wish I bought more because then I could cut them into shapes, just like the uh, painting wedges that you can buy um, really, really expensively online. You can actually make your own in minutes um, just using the supplies you already have. And I've made a few here. You can see the different textures that I'll be able to scrape in there. Um, I just basically just cut some slits here. I'll show you in just a second and we'll demo these out. This is one. This is the one I'm going to keep playing. So for this one, I want to make kind of maybe like a plaid design. So I'm going to cut um, some shapes out that are different widths apart. So I'll have, maybe I'll have a small one next. And if it's easier just to cut them in a V, go ahead and do that. I just thought this might make it easier for me to tell them apart if I cut them kind of like a little square. It's a little harder to do it that way. And then I'll leave another bigger gap here. I'll just do this one as a triangle so it's a little more sturdy. So now I've got that shape. Now if I want, I could round this. Um, I could make it into a point. Maybe I'll make that one into more of like a, a point. Give it a little swoop to it or something just so I have that more of a sharper point to to grab if I want to. But I mean you can plan it out. You can even, you know, look online for other texture tools just to kind of get an idea of what you want to emulate. Now that will give me kind of like a wider nib. If I want I could cut it a little bit shorter. Now another really inexpensive way to find some tools for your printmaking is to look in the hair care section. I was again at Dollar Tree and um, I was, they had a pack of combs and there were like 10 combs in it, but these three I thought were really interesting. This one, I love all of these different shapes. They're, and again, they're rounded. They're not sharp. They're not going to hurt my uh, my jelly plate. You do want to check that out before you use something on your jelly plate. Um, then I had this one, which gives me lines a little bit closer together. Um, this one is just slightly different than the other two. And then this one's further apart. So, you know, these uh, three combs were less than a dollar altogether. And... Um, and they're going to work really good. Another thing I did, and this tip came from fellow YouTuber, UK Marianne. Uh, she showed me that you could take fun foam scraps and cut them with your decorative scissors, just like the scrapbooking scissors, you know, that you had back in the day with the funny edges. Those scrapbooking scissors cut fun foam really well. I know red is hard to see. Let's use this one because this one's really bold. Um, it cuts fun foam really well. And then you can, you need both hands, but you can drag it through the paint on your jelly plate and use it that way. And it's a great way to make some really cool textures and marks. And, you know, if you have fun foam already or you have leftover pieces, you could even do this on like a cereal box kind of cardboard and it wouldn't hurt your plate and it would work really well. So, you know, practically free. Now this is kind of neat because it's getting more use out of something you've already bought and paid for. So these embossing folders, they're fun. We love them. We collect them. We have a lot of them. So I took this old um, kind of card base that it was actually a step out from a tutorial and I didn't need it anymore and I wasn't going to make any more of these cards. So I just embossed it. Now I can use this on my jelly plate as a stamp. So you probably want to see some of these techniques in action, right? All right, let me go grab my jelly plate, ink it up, and we will try some of these out so you can see what they look like. And it gives me a great time to try out the new student jelly plate. I picked this up, um, you know, I think it was $20 at AC Moore, but I used a coupon, so I got it for $10, and I haven't used the student one yet. Now, the thing to note about the student one is that it's thinner, and the regular price on this is like the same price as a 6x6, and this is only 5x5. So um, keep that in mind, although if you can get it at AC Moore and use a 50% off coupon, then it's a heck of a deal. I'm going to pause it while my furnace turns off, so hold on another moment. Okay, that was pretty cool for all you guys that missed the furnace sound since I've been filming upstairs. Ah, oh, good to be back downstairs. Okay, I did want to show you the difference between the student jelly plate and the uh, regular jelly plate. So this is the, the regular one here. And these are both new, so I can kind of show you without showing you a grungy old one. Um, I, I will say that these smell different. This one smells kind of sweet, and this one has no odor whatsoever. Um, and this one says it's... 
the gel is made in the United States, but fabricated in Taiwan. And this one says made in the USA, the student jelly plate. So could be they just change factories or change materials. So anyways, let's look at the thickness. The material feels to be about the same, same amount of squishiness. Uh, I would say, yeah, same amount of squishiness. But if you look at the thicknesses of these, I'm just gonna pull this up here. This is probably way more information than you needed, but I want you to know in case you're looking to buy, just so you know what you're getting. So this is the original one. It's about, it looks to be twice as thick as a student one. And the student ones are not half the price. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. Of course, you can get it with a 50% off coupon at your big box store, that's one thing. But if you're, you know, seeing them side by side in an art supply store, you know, it, I'd probably spend a little bit more and get the thicker one personally, because I think, you, you know, if you, damage one side the other side would be fine to use but uh, that's just my opinion on that i think they came up with the student ones because so many teachers wanted to bring this to their classes and you know if you're buying a hundred of something you're even buying 20 of something you want to you know if you can save a little bit on each one that can really make the difference between being able to offer the class or not so just wanted to give you guys the heads up but i'm going to try the student one because i've never used it before okay um i'm just going to grab a couple different colors here and we'll try out our diy tools Sorry if I'm talking fast. Um, you could probably tell I'm a little nerved up. I'm a little nervous about flying, but you know what? While the furnace was on, I printed my boarding pass. I'm such a big girl. I printed my own boarding pass. I don't know if this is enough, but I don't like to over ink my plates because then it gets all gushy and gross on the sides. And I'm just using some inexpensive craft paint. Now I find that the thicker jelly plate seems a little easier to ink. It just, I think it's maybe because it squishes a little bit more. I don't know. Let's go first with the um, the homemade tools here. I like the handle. I like that I can uh, hold it and draw with it. You can wipe away some really cool designs there. And then to clean this, you could just wipe it on a rag or wipe it on, you know, some scrap paper or something, whatever, wipes right off. And I'll just use this copy paper here. Pull my first print. Actually, this is a five by five size, and I don't think any of the other jelly plates are that size. You can see there. Um, so that's kind of neat. Just gives you a different option. So if you did want to try it, at least you're not buying the exact same size. So if you're going to do like, say you cut down a piece of cardstock to, to make a square card and you're just using eight and a half by 11 um, cardstock and you cut it like five and a half, so you get a five and a half by five and a half card. This is going to give you a really cool background because you'll have that kind of rough white edge if you're using white cardstock, which I think is kind of cool. Um, another homemade tool I wanted to show you is just plastic canvas or any sort of canvas or something like that. As long as it's not sharp, you can use that to put some texture onto your um, your plate. I showed you that in the jelly printing video I did the other day. So now it's got a really cool texture. Um, and then these are foam bath blocks from, you know, the dollar store or Target. And you can get some cool uh, designs. We can make like a dice or something. Stamp off the extra. And you can even heat these up and press them onto things and get cool textures. That's what I did a long time ago. I don't even know if the texture is still going to show up or not. And, um, you know, if I wanted to draw something, if I wanted to maybe draw some designs around these, I could just with this one that I carved out a little bit, um, a little bit more pointy. And let's see how that looks. I'm not going to do any world earth shattering printmaking here, guys. I'm just showing you how to use these handmade tools. And so you can see that's pretty cool with that texture on there. Now, if you do any die cutting or, um, yeah, die cutting, or if you have any leftover die cuts from something you bought, sometimes you'll find that you'll have some really cool leftover pieces, or if you do punching, paper punching, and you can take that um, leftovers and you can use that as a stencil. So that's another idea for you. Don't throw away those uh, paper leftovers because they can make great stencils. And the cool thing is once you've been jelly plate printing and you keep like adding um, paint, they become like, way more durable because they get that coating of paint on them. And then it's kind of like you have like a nice plastic stencil after a few, you know, times with the jelly, with a jelly plate. So, you know, it gets better the more you use it. And if you buy paper stencils, oh, that, that gave a really cool, um, a really cool texture. Uh, and this is just that embossed paper that we had. Um, so, you know, it will make your stuff a little more useful too. So now we got that real co really cool texture. Let's just print that on a piece of deli paper because that's what I have right here. I wasn't planning, I was just gonna do the tools, but I'm like, you know what? People are gonna wanna know what they look like. Then I just wanna see the tools. They're gonna wanna know what they can do, right? 
and there's that. I really like that. I should do that with all my embossing folders. Now, yeah, you could press the embossing folder on that, but that's going to be a kind of a pain to clean, so why bother with that? Um, and then our little foam tools here that I told you that my friend uh, Marianne, UK Marianne on YouTube and on WordPress. Uh, you know what? I'm going to put a little more color down there because I don't think you'll see it very well. And she showed me how to do this. She's really, really clever. She's got a lot of really cool uh, jelly ideas. And then I'm grab another one of these here. I like to wiggle them, but you can just pull them straight. It looks kind of cool. And I could go in with this, make like a checkerboard. You know, it's just the more like creative you get with your supplies, the more you're going to love them, the more you're going to realize, you know, the more ideas you'll you'll come up with. And then if I wanted to give a little texture with like my canvas here, I could. Just maybe a little bit in the corner. Now let's pull that print and see what it looks like. I hope it inspires you to give it a try. Now I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I love these jelly plates because they're so convenient, but gelatin prints that you make with um, unflavored gelatin, the gelatin plates, um, and I do have a couple recipes on my on my channel, one for a permanent one and one for a temporary one. I think you get a better print from actual gelatin. I will tell you that just in my experience and, um, but the, you can't beat how convenient this is with their little storage packages and whatnot. I have not been compensated by the jelly arts company or anything, but you know, that's just, that's my honest opinion. I love how convenient these are. Um, you don't have to worry about getting a recipe right. And there's the ghost print there, which I think looks really good. Um, but you know, just, just for what it's worth, the only downside is that, you know, if you don't make a permanent plate, then it's going to spoil and you need glycerin to make the permanent plate. And then it might be just as expensive as, as buying a, um, a jelly plate. So I just wanted to, just wanted to give you that info there. Now you can freeze your regular gelatin plates. If you make a, a regular one just with gelatin and water, you can freeze it when you're not using it. And you know, until you're ready to use it again, if you're going to go a long period without using it and it will be, it'll last really, really well. So don't feel like you have to, um, you have to go out and invest in this. In fact, I would see if you really liked it. If you're only going to jelly print once every two years, you know, just make one. Do your printing, toss it, and make another one in a couple of years when you feel like doing it again. See? So fun. Think of all the embossing folders you have. Think of all of these inexpensive little cheap spatulas you can buy, and um, and they're so inexpensive. I mean, I think the single-ended end ones that are made by the fancy art supply company, I think are about 10 to $20, and that's crazy. This is a buck, and you get two ends, so I love that idea. I hope you do, too. I hope you find it useful. If so, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think, and for cleanup, this is something that a lot of people ask me. How do you clean up your plate when you're done, Lindsay? Very simple. I'm just going to use a paper towel and um, some water. And if you clean it up right after you're done using it, because if you let, and some people say, oh, I don't, don't bother. It's not a big deal. You don't have to clean up your plate. I'll tell you what, if you don't clean up your plate, you're not, your, your prints are going to suffer. They're not going to be as crisp. If you are, if you start to do some prints where you're, you know, maybe using ribbons or fabrics or things like that to get some really subtle textures, it's not going to show up. If you have caked on paint there, it's not going to be, um, it's not going to give you the level of print. Definitely not going to give you the level that a gelatin print would give you. So I recommend that you do spend some time to clean off these stencils aren't a big deal. These tools just wipe these off a little water. If you do find that you've got some dried paint on there that you can't remove, you can use some hand sanitizer. However, I would do that as last. I wouldn't do that every time. I just do it if you need it because I have a feeling that hand sanitizer might break down that um, that material after a while. Now I don't have any proof on that, but that's it's an alcohol. It tends to break down polymers. So and I and I reckon that's what these plates are. They're some sort of polymer, and I wouldn't want you to do anything to degrade your um your plate i mean they even say don't clean your clear stamps with um with alcohol based products so i just want to make sure that you protect your investment so you can get years and years of use out of it because hey if you buy it if you spend your money on it then it ought to last you you might as well take care of it and always clean your rubber brayer up because if you get dried paint on that it's not going to perform very well either thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you give this a try let me know what you think of this and um thumbs up if you liked it thanks for stopping by until next time happy crafting